Hello friends. <clears throat> In this video, I'll provide you an overview of one of the core scriptures of the Hindu religion. So if you start looking at the religious documents or the religious scriptures of Hinduism, you will start with the Vedas. After Vedas, you have a whole set of documents coming into picture. And the first amongst these is what is called as Manusmrati. So Manusmrati succeeds the Vedas. And its importance is almost equivalent to the Vedas because Manusmrati provides guidelines of behaving in a society. So that's why it's a very important document. In fact, if you look at the modern constitution of India, you will see that a lot of sections, a lot of things of the constitution have been taken or are inspired by the texts that are given in Manusmrati. So if you look at all the kings of India, ancient India, Chandragupta, Ashoka, all these kings, you will find that Manusmrati was the basis of their governance at least at some point of time. So in this video, I will provide you an understanding and overview of this very important scripture, very important document of the Hindu religion. How old is Manusprati? So if we look at the records, How old, what is the date that can be established for Manusmrati? And we know that there is one more scripture, one more ancient document which is called as the Yagya Valk Smrati, and that we have its records in the sense that we have got manuscripts of Yagya Valk Smrati and those manuscript are 300 BC, dated at 300 BC, and they refer to Manusmrati. So, on the basis of Yagya Valk Smrati, we can very clearly see that Manusmrati dates back or is even a document which is before 300 to 200 BC, before Christ. So, let's have a look at uh, Manusmrati here. Now, there are various versions of this Manusmrati. By versions, what do I mean? I would say various translations of Manusmrati from Sanskrit to Hindi, Hindi language. There are different publications. The document that I am referring, the Manusmrati that I am referring has been published by Arsh Sahitya Prachar Trust. So the original publication was dated 1984, but this is also available in a 2005 edition, published by the Arsh Sahitya Prachar Trust. So this is the original Manusmrati, but the compiler here, what they have done is that they have looked at all the shlokas Shlokas are, you could say, couplets or verses. So, shlokas, they have looked at all the shlokas of Manusmrati, around 2600 shlokas, and then they have analyzed each shlok for its originality. So, on various parameters, they have critiqued the originality of the shlok, and then they have concluded that out of these 2600 shlokas, 
Around 1200 shlokas were the part of the original Manu Smriti and 1400 have been added successively over a long period of time. So, these additions have happened during the reigns of various kings as well as in the modern times additions have been made during the British time. And in this uh, document, they have provided various kinds of evidences to suggest those additions. So, I am referring to this Manu Smriti because it presents original 1200 shlokas as well as all the remaining 1400 which have been added much later. So, every, sh every shlok is presented and it is justified whether it is a part of original Marus Manu Smriti or is it a part of it or it has been ex added externally. So, I will provide you an overview here. So, let us have a look at this document. So, this is Manu Smriti. So, this is the author here. You can see here the name is Dr. Surendra Kumar. So, he has an MA in Sanskrit and Hindi and also a PhD. So, this is that original Manu Smriti and here if you look at it, you will find that, so this person here is Dr. Surendra Kumar who has analyzed each shlok. So, the Sanskrit shlok is presented in the Manu Smriti. The meanings of the words of that Sanskrit, of the Sanskrit language for that shlok are presented and then the Hindi translation is given and then an analysis is presented for each shlok whether that shlok is a part of original Manu Smriti or whether it has been added much later. So, let us look at this here. So, this is all in Hindi language. Now, here in the introduction, you will find here that the details have been provided as to how many shlokas are there in each chapter. So, here you can see that there are 12 chapters in this Manu Smriti and each, in each chapter the Prakshipt Shlokas represent the Shlokas that have been added much later and the original Shlokas are presented as Molik, Shesh. So, you can find here as an example that in the first chapter of Manu Smriti, the total shlokas that are available are 144, out of which original shlokas are only 78. So, you find the total is given here that approximately there are 2600 shlokas in the Manu Smriti, out of which approximately 1400 have been added much later and the remaining 1200 are part of the actual or the original Manu Smriti. And in the introduction section, the authors here have presented all evidences why shlokas are identified as original or additions. So, it is very well, very nicely established in here. So, so if we look at Manu Smriti here, so this is for example, uh, if you look at uh, the Manu Smriti, you will find the chapter wise uh, divisions are given like which chapter and the contents of each chapter are given. So, this is the, the initial content part of it. For each chapter, what are the constituents, what are the contents of each chapter that is given. And then, if you look at, so this is again, you could say a prelude or, you know, uh, an a background. So, here in this chapter, the author establishes the background of why this analysis of the shlokas is, importance, is important. So, here if you look at these part, you will see uh, a lot of information is given as to uh, who, who was Manu, the history of Manu and all of that information is provided here. And then for example, here in the first part of the introduction, the background, the author describes that who was the original uh, person who is credited with Manu Smriti, who wrote the Manu Smriti. So, here the author goes on to describe that 
the swayam bhuv manu is the person who is credited with manu smriti so this is the first part and then if we move further and if we go to the original manu smriti here so let's move here so this is all the background uh, background itself is divided into a few chapters and then it finally it reaches uh, the the manu smriti so so this for example is the second chapter then the third chapter of the background and then here you can see let me just scroll it further so this is the third chapter and if we keep on scrolling it we reach to the original manusmriti where the manusmriti starts so this is the fourth chapter so this is then the fifth chapter so this is so let's look at so this is again an analysis of the first part and then now here onwards the author starts with manusmriti so so this is where the manusmriti starts so this is for example the first chapter of manusmriti so here you can see the content of the first chapter is given as srashti utpatti evam dharm utpatti so here the author goes on to discuss the creation the constitution the formation of this ent entity this universe this multiverse whatever you call it so how this creation itself comes into being so here if let's look at one of the example shlokas here so let's look at one shloka here so one of the example shlokas so in the in in the first few shlokas you will find that you know who has narrated the manu smriti and things like that but here for example is the first first place that describes the creation of this jag that is jagat so jagat utpatti vishay so how this universe comes into formation so here for example the first shloka is given and then its translation is given so say for example the first shloka goes on to read yah sab jagat srashti ke pehle pralay mein andhkar se aachhadit tha उस समय न किसी के जानने न तर्क में लाने और न प्रसिद्ध चिन्हों से युक्त इंद्रियों से जानने योग्य था और न होगा किंतु वर्तमान में जाना जाता है और प्रसिद्ध चिन्हों से जानने के योग्य होता और यथावत उपलब्ध रहता है सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट श्लोक सो श्लोक वन टू फाइव सो दिस इज वेर द क्रिएशन इज गेटिंग डिस्कस्ड सो हियर यू विल फाइंड that once this shlok comes into picture then you will find that its interpretation is given here as to why this shloka forms the original content of manusmriti so this is first chapter so if we look at the manusmriti you will find that overall there are such 12 chapters and each chapter discusses uh something that is unique so here for example the first chapter is concerned with the creation of not only the universe the the multiverse the this entire cosmos or or you know the creation itself so how it comes into picture and then there is also discussion about how dharm or righteousness or the 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 core attributes core qualities start emerging so this is described here in the first chapter then if we go ahead so if you look at the first chapter itself then you will find here quite a lot of interesting things are given for example you will find that you know what constitutes a a, a day 
दिन रात का काल परिमाण सो वॉट इज द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ द डे हाउ मेनी काष्टा और हाउ मेनी निमेश हाउ मेरी मुहूर्त आर देर इन अ डे देन सत्युग इज डिस्क्राइब त्रेता द्वापर एंड कलयुगाज आर डिस्क्राइब ब्रह्मा के दिन और रात का परिमाण सो ऑल ऑफ दिस इज गिवन सृष्टि का प्रारंभ फॉर एग्जाम्पल सृष्टि का प्रारंभ देन द फाइव सेंसेज द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द फाइव सेंसेज is presented here and then different kinds of beings are also described so here you will find that uh, 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 jal aur prathvi ki utpatti and all these things are described here so this is the first chapter then in the uh, in the same chapter you will find that you know things like uh, brahmavart desh ki seema uh, all of these are described here in the first chapter then if you look at the second chapter then all the sanskar the 16 sanskars that are a part of hinduism for example the sanskar of naming children for example the sanskar of uh, providing them food for the first time uh, the the mundan sanskar all of these sanskars are described here in the second chapter then if we go ahead uh, the education sanskar the shiksha and all of these are described in the second chapter and let's look at look ahead then the third chapter so in the third chapter you will find that samavartan vivah marriage different types of marriage what are the different ways of getting married are described here so there is arsh vivah there is rakshas vivah there is gandharv vivah so all these different kinds of vivah are or marriages are also described here in the third chapter and then in the fourth chapter the responsibilities the duties of a person who is living in a grahastha ashram these are described so grahastha ashram is an ashram where a person is involved in uh, worldly family based things so uh, so that is a second ashram so there is there are these four ashrams in hinduism the first ashram is an ashram of let's say education when a person gets educated then you have the second ashram second phase of life when a person lives a married life has children lives a family life so that is called as the grahastha ashram so in the fourth chapter you will find that the behavior in a grahastha ashram is described here and then in the fifth ashram fifth uh, fifth chapter you still find that the grahastha ashram is again discussed in slightly more details in the sense that what are the things that should not be done for example marks mass bhakshan and all these things are described here various kinds of sanskars related to grahastha ashram are described uh, then in the 6th chapter the remaining two ashrams uh, of the vanprastha ashram where a person starts dissociating himself from worldly uh, matters and prepares himself for a very meditative stage of human life towards the end so that is called as the vanprastha ashram the third ashram so in the 6th chapter you will find that the vanprastha ashram and the sanyas ashram sanyas ashram is the last ashram where a person finally takes meditation as a core activity and only meditates and meditates so in the 6th chapter you will find that these two ashrams are described and then as you move ahead then in the seventh chapter the governance related aspects are covered so how a king should govern how what kind of you know uh, the ministry ministry should a king have how should a king king rule govern all that is described in the seventh chapter uh, so this is quite detailed and then you have the eighth chapter which is again a uh, description of how to uh, how to judge how to make judgments so say for example how to 
how to impose the rule of law so that is again covered in the 8th chapter so you will find here chapters like who should be who is an eligible witness for example sakshi kaun ho sakshi kaun nahi ho sakte uh, then you know if matters of financial dispute how to handle these uh, if there is a theft then how to deal with crimes related to to theft all these are covered in the 7th chapter uh, here sorry the eighth chapter it is quite detailed the nine ninth chapter is again related to governance so how do you uh, uh, make decisions about familial affairs for example so here for example uh, if there is a dispute between wife and husband how do you Uh, uh deal with that so all that is again so this is all governance here uh in, in the 7th 8th and 9th chapter uh then let's look at the 10th chapter so in the cha 10th chapter the the four ashramas are discussed and how people can transition from these four ashramas so uh, not ashramas but the four varnas so say for example uh, 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 under the hindu conceptualization a society has four different ways in which it can be conceptualized on the basis of work so the kind of the 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 core qualities of people are fourfold so there are some people who are always intellectually inclined there are some people who are uh, who have a core attribute of being a devotee then there are some people who are martial in nature so on this basis there are four kinds of divisions and this also corroborates with the works of uh, perhaps socrates and plato who have also conceptualized society on the basis of you know people who are intellectually inclined people who are martial there are some men who are men of thought as will durant quotes when he goes on to describe socrates and plato and aristotle the early greek philosophers so this precedes them manusmriti definitely precedes the era of uh, uh, the greek philosophers so here you can see that uh, in the 10th chapter the four uh, uh, constituents of a society the four types of people how these can be transformed from uh, one type to another type is is discussed here and then if you move ahead then in the 11th chapter penance or how do you do what is called as prayaschit is detailed in the 11th chapter so the hindu practice of fasting for example uh, is described here how do you penance how do you do prayaschita how do you uh, accept that you have faulted somewhere or you uh, you accept that you have you have perhaps uh, uh, committed a sin so how do you do penance of that is discuss discussed in the 11th chapter so say for example uh, by giving alms or daan that is one way of doing prayaschita so that is described here what are the different kinds of upvasas or fasting that can be done all different types of upvasas are for example described here so there are there are various types of upvasas uh which which may last for one day to many many months are all described um, here in the 11th chapter and then finally uh, you have the 12th chapter where the karma is discussed and the implications of karma is discussed that is if you if 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 you do a particular type of karm then the effects of those karma are going to come back to you is discussed here so for example in this chapter it goes on to say that uh, a person does karma through three uh, you could say media that is the body the speech and the thoughts so these are the th three media through which 
karma happens so you can think bad you can speak bad for example and you can do bad and it goes on to say that if you think bad the effect of that will be delivered to the thought uh, so similarly if you speak bad the effect will come back in form of speech but if you do bad it will come back in form of an action so that is de detailed in the 12th chapter so these are those 12 core chapters of manu smriti and what dr surendra kumar has done is that uh, why this book is a must read if you want to gain a true and a good understanding of manu smriti is because each shloka is discussed here whether it was a part of original manu smriti or whether let's say it was added during the british times or during various times of the hindu history so they have presented evidence here that how many shlokas were actually added uh, in the british times as well so 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 that's why rather than reading any manu smriti it's a good idea to read this one because this person dr surendra kumar has done all the hard work and he has done it in in detail so so for example he has presented various western authors who have kind of discussed this issue of additions in manu smriti so amongst the western authors uh, he has provided evidence from a german historian uh, indologist called as dr wooler and from the hindu or the local indigenous uh, authors he has presented the works of kullu bhat who has discussed the similar issue of editions in manu smriti so he has done quite a good work here and this book is available on the website called as vedrishi.org so if you want to buy it the pdf is also you can google search it for manu smriti by dr surendra kumar and this will provide you with the details now let's have a quick look at any random shloka so let's and see if that is a part of what does the shloka says uh, and whether it is a part of original manu smriti so you can see here that if a shloka is not original then its number is if, if a shloka is original from manu smriti then you will find that a number of the original shloka is given as well as in the parenthesis you will find that what is the number of that shloka in the original manu smriti so these ones here because no parenthesis is given so these are probably the shlokas that have been added much later so we'll look at one of the shlokas where you will find that uh, this shloka is also a part of the original manu smriti so let's have a look um, a random one uh, to understand any one shloka of the manu smriti so let me go ahead there are quite a lot of shlokas because almost 1400 shlokas have been identified as additions so this here for example shlok number 119 to 284 are prakshipt are additions on the following grounds so here the author has described for almost over 100 shlokas the reasons why these shlokas are prakshipt so you can see here so this is done throughout the manusmriti so let me find out one shloka which is so here for example is one shloka that is a part of original manu smriti so you will find here the original number of this shloka is 286 and this is uh, so without the additions if you if you look at all the shlokas without the identification of the additions you will find that in act, in the manu smriti the number is 286 but if you remove the additionals uh, the additions you will find that in the original manu smriti this number was 84 so here for example it is said yah tumhe sampurna pancha yagya sambandhi vidhan kaha ab aage dvi jatiyon ko mukhya ajivika aur jeevan charya ke vidhan ko suno so this is one one uh, shlok which is the part of original one so here let's look at this one grahasti ko chahiye ki vah pratidin vighas bhojan ko khana wal khane wala hove athwa amrit bhojan ko khane wala hove atithi mitro adi sabhi vyaktiyon ke kha lene par bache hue bhojan ko vighas kaha jata hai so here it's very clearly said that 
a grahasth a person who is in living in a family life he should make sure that once all the guests all the friends etc have eaten it's only he should consume the food after everyone has eaten so you see very high moral ground is given here that a person living in a family life should ensure that everyone else in the house perhaps has eaten first and then it should come to him to eat the food so you see here and then it goes on to say that yagya mein ahuti dene ke baad bacha hua bhojan amrit kehlata hai so after the yagya is performed so before having your food you know some kind of token activity that represents a yagya should be performed so this is given in this shloka so let us have a look at some other shloka here which is so let's let's look at this one for example so let's look at this shlok so this is uh, in this chapter so this is the 12th shlok so manushya jaise jaise shastra ka vichar kar uske yatharth bhav ko prapt hota hai vaise vaise adhik janta jata hai aur iski priti vigyan mein hi ho jati hai another interpretation so this is coming from the satyarth prakash interpretation so here it is mentioned sir and pra so sir pra represents satyarth prakash so the same interpretation has also been given in satyarth prakash so that is also mentioned here kyunki jaise jaise manushya shastron ko yathavat janta hai vaise vaise vah us vidya ka vaise vaise us vidya ka vigyan badhta jata hai usi mein ruchi badhti jati hai so this is a simple description of the human nature that once you start reading or knowing more about a subject matter you eventually get inclined towards that subject matter look at the previous one so this is the 11th one jo shigra buddhi dhan aur hit ko vriddhi karne hare shastra aur ved hain unko nitya sune aur sunave ब्रह्मचर्य आश्रम में जो पढ़े हो उनकी स्त्री पुरुष नित्य विचारा और पढ़ाया करे हे स्त्री पुरुष तुम जो धर्म धन और बुद्धि आदि को अत्यंत शीघ्र बढ़ाने वाले हितकारी शास्त्र हैं उनको और वेदों के भाग की विद्याओं को नित्य देखा करो सो दिस इज वन श्लोका विच इज सींग दैट यू शुड लिसन रीड गेन नॉलेज ऑफ ऑल दो थिंग्स which are basically good which increase your which improve your knowledge so jo dharm that is righteousness so so acquire knowledge of all those things that lead you to righteousness prosperity and intelligence buddhi so this is another shlok so let's look at some more shlokas here from some uh, chapter so let's let me show you this one so व्यवहारों अर्थात मुकदमों को देखने अर्थात निर्णय करने का इच्छुक राजा न्याय ज्ञाता विद्वानों सलाहकारों और मंत्रियों के साथ विनीत भाव एवं वेश से राज्यसभा में प्रवेश करे सो दिस इज सेइंग दैट अ किंग हु इज गोइंग टू गिव अ जजमेंट हु इज गोइंग टू डिलीवर जस्टिस ही शुड एंटर the court room properly dressed along with his advisers and ministers and with a vinith bhav that is with a you could say a polite with some amount of politeness or with a polite attitude so this is how a king who is going to deliver a justice should enter the court room so this is let's look at another one here so this one uh, this is the third shloka in this chapter so sabha raja aur rajpurush sab log deshachar aur shastra vyavhar ke hetuon se nimnalikhit 18 vivadaspad margon mein vivadyut vivadyukt karmon ka nirnay pratidin kiya kare so there are 18 types that are described here that there are 18 types of conflicts 
which should be discussed in a courtroom in this shlok and then in the subsequent shlok you will find that those 18 conflicts would be described so let's look perhaps here so here these are the 18 conflicts that are described in the subsequent shlokas so there are these four shlokas fourth fifth sixth and seventh that go on to describe these conflicts so these 18 conflicts are uh, uh, conflicts related to uh, giving loans for example uh, conflicts uh, related to assets dharovar uh, conflicts related to uh, let's say milavat or adding or uh, conflicts related to quality of products conflicts related to salary vetan so these are those 18 conflicts that are described here so this is another chapter so you can see here if we randomly start looking at those shlokas which were a part of original Manusmriti, then you will find that there is there are no no controversial shlokas. But when you bring in the shlokas which are additions, then those shlokas are very controversial. But when we look at Manusmriti, we should look at the original Manusmriti and not the Manusmriti in which the shlokas have been added much later. So here is one more example. Jo abhi yukta. So let's look. So you will see here that even in India today, the word abhiyukt is used in the law in the courtroom. So this abhiyukt word is coming perhaps from Manusmrati here. So here also you will find that abhiyokta word is appearing. So you can see here that the old Manusmrati words doc are still pre prevalent. Uh, in India and this is at least to all archaeological records if we if we look at the various records for example if we look at the fact that Manusmrati is quoted in the Yagya Valk Smrati and we know that Yagya Valk Smrati was definitely there when for example uh, when perhaps uh, uh, many uh, Greek philosophers and Greek historians were visiting India. So, say for example, we could find evidences of Yagyavalk Smriti either being quoted during the times of Ashoka or quoted during the times of Chandragupta or quoted by Greek historians uh, while they were writing that history. And in that Yagyavalk Smriti, Smriti, we find that Manu Smriti is referred to. So, in fact, some of the shloka in Yagyavalk Smriti are identical to the shlokas of Manusmrati. So that is a further evidence that uh, Manusmrati was there. And various historians, not only the indigenous Indian Sanskrit knowing and Hindi knowing scholars have done that work, but various uh, Western scholars have also done that work and they have concluded that uh, Manusmrati was uh, prevalent and um, the same Manusmrati is known as known by the name uh, Manusmrati is known also as Manu Dharma Shastra and we also have the uh, the manuscripts from Burma and China coming uh, where it is called as the Manu Dhamma Thata. So we have ample of evidence there also which I can present in some other video but here let's look at uh, this shloka here. So here the word abhiyukt comes, and the shloka goes on to say ki say goes on to say that abhiyukt pehle mukadma dayer karke fir apne muked mukadme ke liye kuch na kahe to vah dharma anusar saja ke yogya aur jurmana karne yogya hai. So that is a person if he puts in a case, and then if he does not makes a case for his uh, his allegations then that person is uh, it, it is uh, he is entitled he or she is entitled for um, uh, for some um, uh, kind of jurmana or some kind of you know monetary uh, uh, punishments isi prakar yadi teen pakwale arthat ded maas tak abhi yogi apni safai mein kuch na keh sake to dharma anusar so if a person is not able to provide any 
evidences of his innocence for let's say a period of three months. So here the word actually appears as three, three pakshat. So for three pakshas, so a paksha could be let's say a cycle of a moon. So for three paksh, a moon cycle corresponds to let's say 28 or 29 days. So if a person is not able to prove his or her innocence for about three months time, then probably that person is uh, to be considered as defeated in the court case. So these are some of the shlokas here. So I would suggest that if you get interested into Manu Smriti, then there are two things that you should be doing. The first one is that read the Manu Smriti of uh, Dr. Surendra Kumar. Uh, this is available if you do a Google search Manu Smriti by Dr. Surendra Kumar, you should be able to find it as a PDF document. But uh, apart from that, the website vedrishi.org also has uh, 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 this version available. So one thing is that you should look at the Manusmrati by Dr. Surendra Kumar. And the second is try to read the Manusmrati without translations. Try to read it from the ori in the original language that is either in the Sanskrit or uh, uh, Hindi. Uh, provided that word by word translation of Sanskrit words is given in that uh, Hindi uh, translation. If you have any questions about Manusmrati, uh, please do let me know and I'll try to answer these questions. Uh, I'll make another video in which I'll provide some more context of who exactly Manu was, but by that time you should keep your interest on Manusmrati alive and you should try and read it because this is one of the core documents uh, of the Hindu religion. Read Manu Smriti, which is without the editions. Thanks again for watching this video.